you guys need any cards, packs, sleeves, anything of that nature, shop on TCG Player using my affiliate link in the description. So when I was on stream the other day with uh, Keegan and Joshua Schmidt, they both mentioned actually that Amaryllis Burn was one of their favorite sort of sleeper threat decks out there in the format. So I figured I might do a little episode revisiting it since it's I think the oldest deck that I invented and definitely still one of my favorites uh, even though I don't play it a whole lot lately. But it does hold a special place in my heart as the sort of very first thing that put me on the map in Edison format. Um, so this is my current list. I've gone through a lot of different ideas in terms of changing this list. I've tried hamsters, I've tried decrees, I've tried a weird build with lava golem and uh, magic cylinder and a bunch of wacky burn cards. I've tried um, just like cutting the volcanic counters and putting more like standard good stuff in the main deck. And pretty much all those ideas panned out just worse than like the original build. I, I pretty much think I nailed this one the first time. So the build I have here on the screen is very, very similar. Um, I think you've got to be on those volcanic counters. If you're not playing the volcanic counters, it just becomes like a really bad plant deck and you're better off playing something else. I think you do need to be on just the full turbo element. You need to be on trade-ins. You need to be on card destruction. Morphing jars may be a little more optional, but I do like playing it. Uh, of course, all of the mill engine with the Raikou and the charge. Personally, I think that you need to approach the game with this deck as just a very like aggro burn strategy mixed with a mill deck. Like you are just trying to kill your opponent as quickly as possible. Um, and I think if you try and take the deck a different route, it just like deteriorates uh, into, into something else. So I prefer approaching the game with that perspective. I went up to triple Phoenix wing. Uh, I think this card's very good, especially post board. People will bring in like all sorts of weird floodgates as well. And it's just a generic answer to everything. You don't really care about card advantage in this deck. Um, you just want to be able to like out stuff and put on pressure as quickly as possible. Like you're just trying to kill your opponent in this deck. We we're just trying to kill them. We we're just trying to like hit their life points for as much as possible, as quickly as possible and get to a position where the game is basically unlosable because of like counters and amaryllises in the graveyard. So that is the basic strategy. Um, I think that this 40 and the side deck is quite good. Uh, the extra, as you can see, we also have Geysaris in there. We have we have some some funny GB pre um, going on in the side and the extra. But I think that this list is extremely good. I'm sort of, uh, from the matches that I played, I definitely had trouble like figuring out how to side deck in those matches. So that's something I maybe need practice more. But I am confident that the side deck cards I have in here are mostly good. Maybe you could cut out Gorse Trag and put something else if you really wanted. Although I don't think siding Gorse Trag is necessarily bad. Uh, I think having the Book of Moons is great for outing like Vanny's Fiend and stuff. I think oppression is necessary for X Saber and GBs. Like you aren't, you're not guaranteed to run into them, but if you do run into them, it would be it's a really, really shit matchup. So you need a ton of pre for those. Um, well, especially GBs. GB, you will actually just win post board because we have all this like toxic hate against them. It's pretty funny. Uh, Crow is like standard. I mean, just a lot of standard stuff otherwise. But yeah, that's the list. Uh, let's get into going over the replays. So I played two matches today. Uh, I think one was against like some weird Diamond Dude Turbo thing, and the other one was against some weird Quick Draw thing. So we get to see some funny stuff happening. Uh, against the Quick Draw deck, I mean, I open a pretty, pretty, like, solid hand here. We have a Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and a uh, Titanial going first with a Lone Fire to uh, summon potentially next turn, get into another Titanial. We can pitch the Dandy for the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. So here they go just immediately space. And I actually decide, since I can just get another Titanial, I just decide to tribute the Titanial and preserve this so I can pitch the Dandy and then summon Lone Fire, you know, get into the the next titanial uh, next turn they just go set dust i'm not sure why they didn't lone fire for anything seems like they maybe should have i don't know here i draw this i just decided to summon it straight away and it was a really good thing i did this in end phase actually because i can just get this amaryllis in rotation and we still have this lone fire blossom to potentially get into a titanial and the cool thing about amaryllis is every time it hits in direct it's like 3k damage just straight away um so yeah, we, we just burn for 3k and then we bring it back and it's threatening to burn for another 8. Uh, I can see why Keegan likes this deck. He, has, he he loves to play super aggro and this deck is like as about as aggro as it gets. Like you're just trying to, as I mentioned before, we're just trying to kill the opponent as soon as possible in pretty much all these games. So they go for Titanial here, it's fine. We burn for 8. 
they set dust. Uh, I just flipped the storm. I decide to just clear the titanium. And now they're on like 14 life or something. And it's really hard to win. There's a there's an Amaryllis. They're on 14 life. It's just like extremely oppressively difficult for them to win. And their hand doesn't do anything to this board. So they just scoop it up, go next. Um, I guess maybe they could have pitched quick draw, special quick draw, hit over the Amaryllis, activate brain. No, wait, they would have run out of life. Yeah, never mind. I don't know. So game number two, they go straight away, summon Titanial, charge of Light Brigade. They're on multiple soul release in the side, which is kind of funny. Uh, I go for set Morphing Jar, which might have been a little bit telegraphed here. Um, maybe I just shouldn't have set this one. I don't know. Uh, probably wouldn't have mattered too much, but we go immediately try to get rid of it. And he could have summoned Dandy, so that would have been an issue, actually. We might have just had to Torrential that. I don't know. Uh, we go flip Morphing Jar. I decide to hold my normal summon. I could have summoned the Sangan, but I just decide to use it. Uh, so we get a nice little plus there. And we activate Trade In get some draws i do decide to hit i think i end up i think the likelihood that the opponent has drawn storm is now very high because we've gone halfway through their deck and i haven't seen it so we flip the hidden armory instead of using my normal summon which ended up being really smart because we do get stormed and we also get like quick draw kaiest so kind of a pretty rough uh situation for me here but we have a lot of stuff still so we're gonna be okay we have the phoenix wings which are great for like sniping the drill out of rotation and we do take a lot of damage. I decide to hold the Gardena, which I think ended up being the right call. And we draw the Storm off the top to get rid of his Torrential. So both of us have gotten our Torrentials Stormed. And here we can just go for a ton of damage. And I ponder for a while what to do. Because we could just set Phoenix Wing and set Raikou and give him the the uh, Kaius back. And maybe I should have done that because I actually don't have Dark in my extra deck. So I just have Stardust, but I feel like... The only way we really lose is if this Wing Blast gets sniped, I guess. But Storm is gone. Space Typhoon, we could technically stop with Titanial. So maybe I should have just, like, not stacked for Plague. Because I feel like there's no way we were dying with Gardena and Phoenix Wing. Like, there's just no way, right? Uh, here he makes a mistake. He should have gotten Drill Warrior. Instead, he makes Nitro. And uh, tries to hit over Stardust, but I have the Gardena still. So he's just dead from this point. Um, and yeah, uh, he scoops it up when I Raikou the Nitro Warrior. Second match. This one was up against some, like, crazy Diamond Dude thing. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It's just, like, one of these turbo draw-your-whole-deck kind of deals. Um, I think it's probably trying to summon Dragoon, probably. Um, so I, I have this weird opening hand where I've just got all three of my Raikos. So I decided to flip this one. We milled two Volcanic Counters, which is crazy. Because now he just, like... Our grave is so stacked. We mill the Amaryllis with the Foolish Burial. And I feel like I can't lose from this point. He should have probably summoned that Dandy and tried to hit. He would have forced me to at least Gardena. Um, but he doesn't do it. He sets it. And now we just start hitting into tokens. I decide not to revive the Amaryllis. Because if I do, I won't have any fires in my grave. So if he could put two monsters on the board, he could mess up my double counter. Like, I'm just looking. I have two counters and Burial. It should just be impossible to lose with two counters plus Burial. Like, that's just, that's just 8k damage right there, you know, pretty much. Um, here he goes, trade in. Uh, he could have also just summoned the plasma, I guess. But he opts not to do that. I storm his storm, go hit an armory, get DDR, and then, yeah, from here, we can just actually, like, one-shot, because we have three counters and two Raikos. So, every one, each one of these Raikos just hits for 48, so we, we hit for 48, with all three of the counters, then we burial them all back, and then we hit for 48 again. So we just actually, like, do 96 damage with a Volcanic Counter. Man, Volcanic Counter is so great. <laughs> Don't take that card out of your Amaryllis build. It's, like, so integral to the game plan, and just so good every time you see it. Like, I'm never upset seeing Volcanic Counter in rotation. I'm just like, this card is huge damage, this card is going to win me the game, etc., etc. It helps you play against, like, a lot of the stuff that you're matched up bad against, too. Um, like... It's a really, really, really good versus, like, Blackwings and Christia and stuff, um, which would otherwise own your deck. But if you just have some Volcanic Counters, you know, suddenly your opponent's just dying for, like, doing their normal play. So here, game two, we open a super awkward hand, which can happen, happen occasionally. Like, we've seen some crazy hands so far that were just godly and won me the game, but this one was bad. Also, I think this is kind of 
partially bad siding. I'm not sure, but I think there is credence to like taking out Hidden Armory, or at least some number of Hidden Armory post board maybe. But definitely Sangan should probably come out going second in this matchup, in most matchups. Um, it's going to be a close game, but... And I, and I did some weird siding where I put in like Oppression and DD Crow, and I don't think either of those cards were particularly good in this matchup. At least maybe, if I had drawn Oppression earlier, maybe it would have been useful. But I feel like they're both a little bit more niche. I just kind of didn't understand my opponent's deck um, and didn't brighten, bring in the right like hate. So they chain Treacherous to my DDR, and I get a Sangan Search. So I'm not feeling too bad. I maybe should have just gone Lone Fire and said like he wouldn't be able to play the game if he doesn't get rid of the Oppression. But he also has Gores, which I could have played around, but like we're down a lot of cards. We're not really in a situation where we can be playing around Gores. We need to just... You know, we need to just get in there and do damage. Um, we get stormed, so... I Gardna, and then I burial back the Gardna, and then he soul releases. So, um... Yeah, a little bit unfortunate. And with the Miracle Fusion getting actually hit off the Diamond Dude... I mean, what are the odds? Uh, we pretty much can't win. So, unfortunate. Game number two there. Game number three, we draw a much better hand. I mean, this is just, like, GG. This is just... We have the Equip spells, just hard drawn. The opponent is just dead next turn. Like... No matter what they do, they are dead next turn. Um, their deck doesn't play nearly enough defense to survive this onslaught that is coming with the Mark DDR plays. So we bring back uh, we bring back the Lone Fire pitching the Dandy because we can get lethal if we pitch the Dandy here. As you see, uh, we go for Summon Plague, Synchro for Brianac, which is exact 8k, and then if there's a Trag, we can like do some stuff pitching Amaryllis um, main 2 which is why I want this, um, because we had lethal anyway. So, yeah, we end up taking the W in game number three there. Um, we didn't actually see Volcanic Counter a whole lot, but when I saw it, it was crazy, like, for sure. That card is nuts. You gotta play that card. I'm the, I'm the biggest of Volcanic Counter stan uh, with regards to this deck. This deck's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, you can brick. We saw it in the game number two of this match. That was definitely a bad hand. I think there was some poor siding decisions made in that game as well that contributed to the one loss there. But um, you also draw a lot of just insane hands, just like hands that win you the game. You feel like you just can't lose. Uh, you get some lucky mills. You feel like you just can't lose. You know, like in that one game where I milled the double counter, it's just like, all right, GG. Like, you're just dead from that. They And they were just dead from it, so... I'm a big fan of this deck. This deck's a lot of fun. I still enjoy playing it to this day, even though I like to focus on, you know, moving to other decks and always thinking of new builds. But as I said, the Amaryllis one will always be special to me. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.